Cheers everyone, my name's Mike and I'd like to introduce you to the Lemon Drizzle Gang YouTube channel. Um, we're a group of guys and some of us have got some lovely classic bikes and the purpose of this channel is to share the bikes with you. So we're going to do a video on each of the bikes. So we've got bikes from the 1960s and 70s mainly. We've got one bike from the 1950s, an aerial square four, uh, but we've got BSAs, Triumphs, Nortons, uh, a couple of Italian bikes, a Motor Guzzi and a Laverda. So each video will be highlighting, showcasing one of the bikes. So what we'll do is we'll have a chat with the owner, we'll have a good look at the bike, take some nice photographs, and then I'm going to be in the lucky position where I'm going to be able to ride the bike, so I'm going to get a go on it. So I'm not a classic owner myself, so I'll be able to come from the perspective of riding a classic bike in a modern day experience. So I've, I rode classic bikes years and years ago, but it, it's about 20 years ago since I've, I've ridden one in anger. So it'll be a very interesting experience and, and I'll be very lucky doing that. So if that's something that you think you'd like, then we'd love you to come along on the journey with us. So click like and subscribe and uh, just be part of it with us. We want to engage with you, so um, we we'll welcome your comments, uh, let us know what you like, what you don't like, share your experiences, because there's, there's a wealth of experience out there. We'll just kind of form a bit of a community of people with old bikes. So why are we called the Lemon Drizzle Gang? Well, as I said, we're a group of guys, but we met when we were in our teenagers back in the 70s. And we had a common interest then, which is bikes. And we've met up again now in later life, probably about 10 years ago, we all got back together again. And we still have the common interest, bikes, but we've just got a few more of them. But these days, instead of going racing or roaring around the place like we did when we were youngsters, we just poodle around from cafe to cafe, drinking coffee and eating lemon drizzle cake. So, the first bike that we'd like to showcase is Dave's. Now, Dave you'll meet a lot because he's got a lot of classic bikes, a lot of lovely bikes. But today we're going to be looking at his absolutely beautiful Triumph Bonneville from 1968. And it's a 1968 Bonneville T120V. I don't think it's got a V on the end of it. You can edit that out. Doesn't matter. Cheers. Okay, so this is Dave, Hello. he's the owner of the bike, and um, he's very kindly offered to show us around it, and he'll take us for a ride on it a bit later on. So, I don't know, do you want to give us a bit of background on, yeah. on how you got the bike? Yeah, that's, that's a good story, Mike. So, uh, yeah, I bought the bike, I'd always, I owned a few 750 bodies, and um, I drank too many beers one Friday night, about 12 years ago, I guess, and then... Um, saw this on ebay with uh, ebay.com the american ebay site and uh, it was in st louis i think missouri um and uh, yeah being one beer too many i hit the dreaded bike now but woke up next morning thinking did i really just buy a 650 bonnie in missouri um and sure enough i had this was pre being married though, wasn't it? This was pre being married, you're right Mike, yeah, yeah. And it did subsequently live in my living room until I got married. Or at least until my now wife moved in. And then it lasted about a week. So, uh, the bike in the living room, not the marriage. And uh, yeah, so I, I shipped it over from St. Louis to California where I had a mate. And spent a very pleasant two weeks riding around California on it. It, it, it was very much as you see it now, although I've done a lot of work on it since. Um, but it looked great. It had sat in someone's office as a sort of exhibit, really. Hadn't been used in anger. Had some work done on it, but um, sure enough, it broke down a few times in California. So did you do all the canyons and the, the Alice's Restaurant? Uh, I, I did Alice's Restaurant and I did the Coast Road 
um, Highway 1, um, popped into Ravers in San Jose, which were a huge British bike dealer, and he gave me another, or sold me another air filter can, because one of Jetson and a few other bits and pieces. I didn't do uh, the mountains in the desert. Um, really, it was just local rides out of San Francisco where my mate lived. And then we shipped it home. It was the first bike I ever shipped home. And um, yeah, rode it round for a bit, put a 750 kit on it, um, to pep it up a bit. It gives it this bit of torque, really. And then, stupidly, about 12 years ago, no, about eight years ago, I stripped it down to re powder coat the frame and various bits and pieces. The cycle parts were getting a bit tatty. And um, three house moves and one young daughter later. Uh, it was my COVID project to get it rebuilt, and um, this is the first time it's been back together in about eight or nine years. So. First, first time I've ever seen it together. Yeah. I've, I've seen various parts of it <laughs> yeah. over the years. Fuel tank in the guest bedroom, engine in the uh, den, stuff like that. So while it was a par, I did pretty much what I've done on my 750 Bonnie, which was dynamically balance the crank, clean out the sludge trap, put new thunder, uh, lightning con rods from Thunder Engineering, just because the old con rods are now 50 years old, there's nothing, probably nothing wrong with them, it's really just to be sure. Um, slightly, very slightly hotter camshafts in it, mega cycle camshaft, the, the mildest grind they do, which is, is really only a slightly um, notch above standard cams, which are pretty hot anyway. That was just to guarantee the quality of them. Um, and, and that's pretty much it, really. Recently, the aim also, it ticks over nicely. And I'm really in stages now. We've done 220 miles since getting it back on the road. So it's still in the bedding down process. But it's, um, yeah, it's proven all right. There's a couple of tiny, I wouldn't call them oil leaks. They're kind of just slight smears at right, some of the gasket surfaces. And it probably needs a head retort. But it's going really, really nicely. Yeah. So as you, got... you will find out when I hammer past you at 95. Uh, as you will, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So what, how many horsepower has it got? Oh God, um, they were they 100. claimed about yeah about 150, yeah. Um, about 50 odd. I guess at the rear wheel you're talking 40, low 40s, a bit more with a 750 kit. But as I said, it's mainly tall. But where it gets its performance from, and where Bonneville's and Triumph Twins in general always got their lovely performance from, is the lack of weight. You know, it weighs about 380 pounds. I don't know what that is. It's about 180 kilo something like that i'm guessing there so i might be a bit out but they were just light and live and you know you ride it now and yeah it's a 50 year old vintage bike but on the back roads and it makes no sense on dual carriageways even less sense on motorways um but around 70 mile an hour it's just a lovely experience you've got the lovely velvety roar coming out the back you've got the lovely chuckability with these high and wide bars standard bars and it just feels perfect on an English B road or a twisty English A road where you're accelerating and braking. And it's got the Steve McQueen cool. It's got the Steve McQueen cool, as have I. I mean, I've got that without yeah. without 68 on it. Mm. But um, the brakes, they've got um, 68s. They introduced two major changes in 68. Were the twin leading shoe brake, which was developed for production racing, and it's a superb brake, way better than the conical brakes that came later, which I've got on a Rocket 3 and it's horrendous. And uh, Twin Amel Mark 1s, they came out with the Mark 1s, which was a bit of a mixed blessing because they wear quite quickly, quite cheap material, but these are really sweet, so they work as they should. Um, but yeah, the 68, 69s and 70s were sort of high, mostly regarded as the pinnacle of the Bonneville. Um, some people think they're a bit overtuned by then and got a bit harsh, and I can see that. But um, in terms of the looks, they got it right and they stuck with the formula. You've got the lovely racing stripe. The later ones had um, scallops, which Triumph copied from a uh, Michigan Triumph dealer. Um, but this has got the racing stripe, which I like. Stainless mud guards, which the 69 and 78 painted mud guards. Lovely uh, red and silver um, high five vermilion, I think it's called. It's like a metallic. They always concentrated on the paint colors, Triumph, just to make sure they really popped mm. in the California sun, which it does. And, um, you know, there's not a bad angle to look at it from. From the tail light right through the seat. That is a lovely tail light, isn't it? It is, yeah, yeah. They they changed it slightly over the years, but, but that's really pretty tail light. The grab rail only came in halfway through 68 and that only lasted a little while. 
because people used to use it as a handle to pull it up on the set stand, and it would bend the seat pan. This is slightly bent, this seat pan. But um, then they went to the sort of standard real loop frame mounted one on the later bikes. And in terms of the seat, it's the original seat cover. You can still just about see the Triumph logo on the back, and I want to keep that, but the phone's very much had it now. That's original phone. It's the original phone. 50 year old phone. 50 year old phone. <laughs> and, and bits of the 50 year old phone <laughs> come out the bottom granulate um, every time I sit on it. But yeah, I mean, I've kept it very standard looking. It's got a couple of hot roddy California. Uh, Tappet cover, tappet covers are kind of the kind of thing that a, an American GI would have spruced his body up with. I guess it's the 60s equivalent of a carbon fiber tax disc holder or something like oh, that. Right, you know? yeah. um, but I quite like that. Um, otherwise, it looks pretty standard, even though, like I said, it's got some mechanical differences under the skin. And it's just so simple. You know, you sit on it and all you've got is a rev counter, a beautiful rev counter in speedo, a dubious ammeter that really just flickers around and doesn't do much two warning lights, one horn button, which is permanently wired to the battery for some reason, um, as standard, and a dip switch. And that is your controls apart from the braking clutch. And it's just elemental. Oh, no indicators. No indicators. The indicators oh, no. didn't come in until Triumph started, I think, wiring the bikes for indicators in about 1970. Yeah. And started fitting them in 71 in the oil and frame era. Yeah. Don't think any of the, what they call dry frame, pre-oil and frame, came with indicators. So it's just very, very simple you can see what everything does as one journalist once said and um, yeah it's all there and it all works and it just makes you feel lovely right fantastic so using that as a segue Perfect let's segue. take it for a ride let's rock and roll So in this clip, Dave's riding the bike, uh, he's riding it expertly compared to the next clip which is me having a go on it. Um, in that clip uh, I do commentary but it's all a bit um, getting used to the bike and woohoo this is amazing. But I wanted to kind of express how I feel about it compared to a modern bike, kind of having a think about it in retrospect. And really it's fairly obvious you know it's a 50 year old bike um, so with that you've got limitations on damping uh, it's not as powerful as modern bikes um, and it vibrates and it generally feels like an old bike but what it does feel like is it, it feels alive it's got a, a, a it's a tangible feel to it you know those vibrations the jumping around all over the place and you'll, you'll hear it in the excitement of me riding it and the, and the, the in, inane giggling that I do in the next clip so it's a totally different experience but it isn't really because it's still the essence of, of riding a bike and, and I make a comment about it's more fun than riding a Honda Fireblade at 150 miles an hour, which it will depend where you're coming from, really. But you know, in this day and age, something like this it is really better suited to our roads. It's it's a gentle experience. You can still you can still you know move pretty well. You certainly you can keep up with traffic and and ride it quicker than traffic. But it's quite surprising in some ways how how modern it is. Like there's a lot of talk. And the braking on this bike is, is really good, so obviously nothing nothing like a, a twin disc setup, but you just ride it differently. But it is a joyous experience riding an old bike like this. And and you have to approach it with a totally different mindset. You've got to be completely open. Um, you know, also the, the, the gear change is on the other side, so you're changing gear. On, you know, with your right foot, which I, I have to make a confession, I, I did used to ride classic bikes years ago, but it's just been quite a few years since I've ridden ridden classic bikes in anger. But it's just a wonderful experience to to ride them, and I love something like this. 
um, you know, I couldn't replace from a modern bike because, well, my modern bike's a Monster Shroud from 2004, so it's not really a modern bike, but comparatively modern. But, you know, I would use that bike to go touring on and, you know, trips abroad. But there's something to ride on a Sunday, something to ride sociably. This is wonderful, and I, and I can totally understand why the Royal Enfield the 650 Royal Enfield has become such a massive hit because it, it encapsulates the essence of this of this Bonneville and gives you that riding experience. So you, you look at it as an experience. You don't look at it and go, "It's only got 48 horsepower." Oh, those you know, spindly little forks. And the brakes aren't very good. It's a different experience, and, and it's a very satisfying experience. And as I said, I'm very lucky to, to have the chance to ride this and uh, the other bikes that are coming up. So, over to my go. <laughs> and apologies for all the laughing and giggling. shift one down three yeah, yeah. only four speed very crunchy yeah. into first pretty crunchy into second nice third to four all right lovely um no damping like i said brakes are decent yeah but it all you know i won't be going as fast as you were <laughs> no um the clutch i've set it up it's got a seven plate clutch in it. it's like a light lighter better clutch but it's it i've not made this it's really light yeah 60s bike, it's really light it's just on the edge of slipping so a couple of times if you don't release the lever just ooh, oh yeah yeah it happened once when you're going up the yeah. hill yeah um yeah i need to tighten it up a bit but other than that it's fine um yeah just yeah it's cool slow in fast out if you're gonna you know, give it a bit don't yeah be yeah to rev it you know not like the trident or something or the triple well when you said rev it to six no, and i revved it to nine work. i haven't told you that oh, okay um i don't know why i've got to check it out yeah but the speedo's working so you know you can rip it up to 50 and third but it, it will feel crude it'll yeah, feel, yeah 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 Incredibly yeah. All right. Lovely. So, let's see if I can start the damn thing. Uh, yeah, you've got to start it. <laughs> oh, ignition is on. Oh, it is on. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yay, yay. Oh, no, how embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> no, that doesn't mean anything. No, 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 I know that. I hit that by mistake. Is it on now? Yeah, it's on. Yeah. No, I've just turned it on. It wasn't on before. Oh, it wasn't, sorry. Ha-ha! <laughs> <laughs> I thought it's because you were a wuss. Well, I am. Yeah. All right. Very good. So it's one down. Yeah, one down. I'll, I'll head off then. Here we go. Oh, nice. So I immediately did with the clutch what he said not to do. Well, it's got lots of torque. Yeah, it's a bit bouncy and jouncy. Let's try the brakes. Yes, they work. There's a mirror. Oh, it's so light. And it, It, it's a little bit like a rocking horse with this damping. <laughs> it's wonderful though. God, it's such an engaging thing to ride. That's my riding rather than the bike. Whee! Oh, there he is behind me, scrutinising me riding. Whee! You know what? Riding something like this is more fun than doing 150 mile an hour on the Fireblade. Well, it is to me and people of my age. 
<laughs> and just as challenging if not more so slow okay so so that was a very smooth downshift Mike not but it's uh it rides nice oh my god getting double vision oh watch out and it sounds just wonderful This is <laughs> oh god. I remember with this bouncing and the engine vibes, you, you lose about three kilos every ride. It's like one of those belts that you put around yourself. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fabulous, absolutely fabulous. Yeah, bit of brake, that works. I just love the soundtrack, it's wonderful. I'm very honoured to uh, have access to these bikes. I have to thank Dave very much for letting me have a go on this. Oh God, that, I'm sure my back won't thank him tomorrow. Oh, this is where I was filming from earlier. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. Yeehaw, ride them cowboy. I'd love one of these. <laughs> <laughs> 